Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about focus stacking. Now, I'm going to be showing focus stacking with a macro style photo. However, I want you to know that you do not have to use this on just macro. You can use it on landscape as well. So what you're going to basically be doing is taking multiple exposures while you're on the scene, and then you're blending them together automatically in Photoshop so that the best focus gets blended in with all of the other images that are in focus. So this is a out of focus macro shot. And this one is the many things in focus macro shot, still not everything in focus. I probably need to take 16 to 20 pictures in order to get this entire dandelion in focus, but you're going to see how this process works so that you can go from that single exposure of focus to multiple exposures of focus all automatically in Photoshop. Okay, so focus stacking can be used for many things. One of the things that I typically use it for is macro photography because I take multiple images of the same still object. As you can see here with this photograph, this has an F8 is the metadata here. This is shot at F8, but it looks like it was shot with maybe something like F1.8. That's because I was zoomed in at five times magnification. The whole macro process can really limit your depth of field when you're that zoomed in. Another instance where you could use this is is in landscape photography. Let's say you're at F8 and you take a picture of your foreground, but you've got a really wide uh, landscape to shoot. You could focus for the foreground, shoot it, focus for the background, shoot it, maybe you should focus for the middle ground and shoot it, and then do the exact same thing that I'm gonna show you here, but with a landscape photo as opposed to a macro photo. So looking at this photograph, you can see that there is quite a bit of blur in here. But then as we take more pictures, it, the blur begins to shift because we're focusing on different areas. I would like to say that this was uh, controlled, but for this image, I was laying on the ground, just barely moving in and out of this dandelion so that I could get as many uh, focused pictures as I could so that I could stack them later like I'm going to show you. So you can see that uh, in this image here, these little curly Q things things are pretty much blurred, but then in this one here, they're almost in perfect focus. But we also want this to be in perfect focus, so how do we do that? Well, there's a really easy way to do it in Photoshop, and I prefer to do it in Photoshop instead of going from bridge to camera raw and blah, blah, blah. We're going to do it right from Photoshop because it's easier that way. So I'm just going to minimize bridge real quick, go into Photoshop, and we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Scripts, and we're going to go to Load Files into Stack. Press that. Now, before we go anything here, um, let's go ahead and make sure that this is set to files and not folder. Now, the difference is that let's say that all of your images were in one folder. You could just open up that folder and it would stack them. I'm going to do it by files and I'm going to browse. So when I browse, I'm going to go to my macro photography uh, section that I have here. And that was dandelion round two. And you can see these images here. So I'm just going to grab each one of these and just open. Press OK. So it's going to load them into here. And then there's a question here, attempt to automatically align source images. Well, yeah, that's going to go ahead and, and uh, speed up the process for another thing that we could do in this. So let's go ahead and just click that now so that we don't have to do it later and press OK. Now, Photoshop is going to run its magic and it's going to create a seamless composite of all of these images. It's going to find the best of both worlds. Uh, what's what's in focus in this picture What's out of focus in this picture. And it's going to do its best job to slam them all together for me and align them accordingly. Sometimes this all, doesn't always appear perfect. So you need to do some uh, further editing afterwards. But most of the time, it's on point. Okay, so now that all of my source images are stacked on top of each other, it's done its best job to align them already for me. I'm just going to click on this bottom one, click on this top one, press and hold shift while you click, and that will select all of them. I'm now going to go to edit, and right here where it says auto blend layers. We already did the auto align layers. We did that before when we, were, when we brought them in through the script. So let's go to auto blend layers, and it's going to ask, how do you want to do this based on a panorama? or stacking the images. We want these to be stacked and we definitely want seamless tones and colors. So go ahead and press okay. 
So it's going to blend all these selected layers. Uh, and basically what it's doing is it's going to create a series of masks for me. So it's going to mask out all of the stuff that's out of focus in some pictures and, and keep the stuff that's in focus in each one of those individual pictures. And you're going to see here that even after taking six photos, it still wasn't quite enough to get the entire flower in focus, but it actually kind of creates a, a nice little blurry environment for us. It's pretty interesting. So let's look at before. This is before and this is after. That was that one single image and this is after. You can see here, if we press Alt or Option on these masks, exactly what it's doing. Now the masks themselves are very rough edged. They aren't very pretty, but that's uh, how it's creating that seamless composite. When we click off of that, you can't see those lines that are happening around the image. You don't see them. But if you click on, say, this mask here, you see that that part is really uh, a very rough edged mask but it fits so seamlessly right there into the image. So from here, what I would do is I really don't like this green piece that's coming out of this flower. So I'll just go ahead and crop that out, pressing, holding shift, cropping and moving this so that the center of my dandelion is kind of at one of those rule of thirds marks so that my eye kind of navigates around the photo and I'll press enter. It's going to go ahead and crop the image down for me. And now I'm ready to work on this as if it was uh, a, uh, finished product, actually not a finished product, but a started product as if, as if this was a single image. So what I would typically do here is grab all of these and press control G to make them a group. And then I'll press control J to duplicate that group. And then I'll click on that group and I will go and make sure that these are merged together into one image. So now I've got that one image right here. And then I've got all the source files down here. So at any time, if I need to go back to any one of those source images and bring something back, I can do that at my leisure. So from here, because I'm in Photoshop CC, I can go to filter and go to camera raw as a filter. Now this is only in Photoshop CC. So from here, I can jump right into camera raw as a filter and edit this just as if it was a normal image from the very beginning. Now, if you don't have Photoshop CC and you have a, a previous version of Photoshop, what you can do is save this as something like a 16 bit TIFF. And after that's saved as a 16 bit TIFF, you can then open it in Adobe Camera Raw so that you can edit it like a normal photograph. It's almost the same process. It's just here we're, we're alleviating one of those steps in our workflow in Photoshop CC. And that's one of the nice things about having Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So now this is going to be the uncropped version of our image and we're free to go ahead and make any adjustments that we want to make to this. If we want to increase our exposure, we want to increase our contrast, maybe adjust our highlights and really kind of blare those out because highlights do look a little bit pretty good when they're blown out in macro. And then if we wanted to increase the clarity, we could to kind of get some of those detailed areas pretty nice and detailed. Now, one of the things I will tell you about macro photography in particular is that it is very uh, dusty. If you have dust on your sensor, it's really going to show in your images. And you can see here uh, that when I go to the uh, blemish tool here, the spot removal tool, and I click on the visualize spots that will kind of show me all of the areas in my photo that have dusty artifacts on them. So this is where I would clean all of that stuff up. And then I would just go ahead and make sure I don't have any noise, maybe adjust my noise and press OK. So from there, I have uh, the before, which was all of the images stacked right here. And now I have the after stacked on top. Now, as I said before, you can use this for landscape photography as well. If you take multiple exposures while you're tripod mounted and you focus in different areas of the landscape. So you'd focus on the foreground of the landscape and then you'd focus on the middle ground of the landscape and then the background of the landscape and you'd merge them together just as I've done here in this macro shot. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. My name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, subscribe, 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 because if you subscribe here on YouTube, you'll get emails every time I update and I update every week onto my YouTube channel. So you'll have fresh new tutorials coming to you every single week. Hop on over to everydayhdr.com because there I send out emails about these new tutorials and anything that's happening that's new and fresh and free on everydayhdr.com. Thank you very much for watching this. Have a great week.